And a good Saturday morning to you Bearcat fans. I'm Kyle Laboria. You're listening to the KGFW Rewind. It's the show where we take the week's previous game and we condense it into a half an hour for you just in case you missed it or if you want to relive some of those great moments from the game previous. A Thursday night game this previous week for the Carney High Bearcats. Omaha Benson having something going on at their facility on Friday. So they had to move the game up a day to Thursday. And the nice thing is they also moved it up an hour. So we all got home at a pretty decent hour Thursday night. Carney High Bearcats coming into this game after winning their first district championship since 2012 with a victory over the Creighton Prep Junior Jays 24-7 last Friday was a good game that saw what really the Carney High Bearcats had in the tank after losing quarterback Cannon Coster. This would be Brayden Miller's first chance to start for the Carney High Bearcats this season. And after having a week of preparation, there were a couple questions that needed to be answered. How was he going to click with his offense? Also, the Bearcats missing one of their best cornerbacks, Davis Skiles. He went out with knee injury in that Creighton, get, Creighton prep game as well. Bearcats entering the game looking to go undefeated for the first time in 10 years. Last time Carney High finished 9-0 in the regular season was back in 2007. That's a year after they went 8-1 and and won their only state championship. So a lot of good things riding when Carney High wins a lot of good games. They come into a game against Omaha Benson, who was 1-7 on the year. Omaha Benson won their first game of the year and then rattled off seven straight losses. But hey, this is football. Anything can happen at any time. So we'll jump right into it. The Bearcats would win the coin toss to start the game. They would defer to the second half. Omaha Benson would get the ball first. And three and out for the Bearcats is what it would be after plays like this. So it is third and let's call it seven. Martin this time will be in the shotgun with an empty backfield. Two wings to the left, three to the right. They send one man in motion. That is Block. Fake the handoff to Block. Martin wants to throw the football, and that is tipped by Isaiah Stahlberg, who is standing in front of the intended receiver, Jaleel Lee, and that will bring up fourth down. And Omaha Benson would go on to punt away on that fourth down. Well, Carney went into this game after the win against Creighton. They were pretty much guaranteed a home slot. But if they wanted to jump up into the number one position, they would need a victory here, plus a little bit of help from other teams around the league. And we'll take a look at that after the second half. Carney High's first possession, they'd get the ball on the Benson 47 and three plays later. Football at the 34-yard line of Benson. By the way, game time temperature 79 degrees. South winds at 10 miles an hour. Bearcats moving from my right to left towards the north end zone here. Two receivers to the right, two to the left this time. Miller looks to his right, quickly gets it to Stallbird, makes one man miss, and now fights out of a couple of tacklers and heads down the sidelines and goes in for the score. Well, I thought they were going to have Isaiah Stallbird down at about the 20-yard line, but it turns into six for Carney High, and the Bearcats quickly on the board. That scoring drive, just three plays is all it took for the Bearcats to get in the end zone. A 34-yard touchdown pass from Miller to Stallbird. Benson would take their next possession, go three and out. They'd be forced to punt again. They'd give it up to the Bearcats on the Benson 30-yard line. Would be one of the best places in the evening that Carney High would start with the ball. And Carney High is known for scoring quickly. They did it again here. Here's another handoff to Mazner. Starts right, goes left, and scampers into the end zone untouched. A seven-yard touchdown run by Miko Mazner, his sixth of the season. And Carney High already on top 13 to nothing with 7.55 to go in the first quarter. Another three-play drive ends up in the end zone for the Carney High Bearcats. A pair of good runs from Miko Mazner. The play previous to that touchdown run was a 21-yarder for Mazner. That helped set up his seven-yard touchdown run. 14-0 Bearcats with less than five minutes into the first quarter. And it was going to be like that for pretty much the rest of the game. Omaha Benson, their next possession, take the kickoff out to about the 26-yard line or so. They would actually end up getting a first down on this possession before they were punt they were forced to punt it away. The Cardi High Bearcats, their third possession of the game, would start at the Benson 39-yard line, and it would end like this. Overmiller split to the right side, to the near side, Novacek and Murray. 
Now they send Murray in motion from the left slot over to the right side. Running option to the left side, keeping it himself. Miller is going to be in for the touchdown. And if I'm right, that I think that's Braden Miller's first rushing touchdown of the season. That is a nine-yard touchdown run for Braden Miller. And the Bearcats now lead 20 to nothing with 3.18 to go in the first quarter. That nine-yard touchdown run by Miller caps a six-play drive. They took about four minutes off of the clock for the Carney High Bearcats. And like I said, it was pretty much game over at this point. The Bearcats were doing whatever they wanted to do with the Benson Bunnies in this game. Benson's next possession, they take the kickoff with about three minutes left to go in the first quarter. They'd get a good 20-yard pass play, and it looked like they were starting to move the ball quite well. That's when the Carney High defense, the best in the league this year, by the way, stepped up and said, nah, -uh, not anymore, not on us. And Benson in Bearcat territory for the first time tonight. Mignowski, the sophomore, once again in the pistol formation. Wings on either side, receivers on both sides. They send one man in motion, that's Lee. Faking the handoff, Ignowski, that one is tipped, and it's going to be picked off by Trey Rodriguez. Rodriguez at his own 35 at the 40. 45 midfield, now cuts it back into the field and is going to make his way down the right sideline before he's finally pushed out of bounds at the 38-yard line. So an interception for Trey Rodriguez, and the Bearcats will get the football back. Rodriguez with the great interception there. It takes about 25 yards before he gets pushed out of bounds. A little side note, that is the side of the field that Davis Skiles is usually on. So we've seen Braden Miller step up into the vacuum created by the Cannon Coster injury. And now Trey Rodriguez making some big plays on the side of the field that Davis Skiles is usually on. So a good thing's happening for the Bearcats. Well, after that interception, we're still in the first quarter, if you can believe it. And the Bearcats find the end zone again. Only takes one play on this scoring drive. Here it is. It is first and 10 Bearcats at the 38-yard line of Omaha Benson. Braden Miller in a quarterback. They send one man to the right. Hand it off. This is Miko Maisner. Takes it up the middle now. Cuts it to the left side. Found the seam. Now wants to cut it outside. He's at the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Miko Maisner. A 38-yard touchdown run that was just supposed to be a little dive play up the middle. But he's able to find an opening on his left trots into the end zone. Bearcats now lead 27 to nothing with 14 seconds to go in the first quarter. That was one of the most dominant first quarters we have seen this season from the Carney High Bearcats taking the lead 28 to nothing at the end of the first quarter. The Omaha Benson Bunnies would have the ball at the start of the second quarter. They would once again go three and out. A little bit to note, the Benson Bunnies would only get five first downs throughout the entire game this week. Carney High Bearcats would take the ball on their first drive of the second quarter in their worst field position of the night. They'd have the ball on their own 45-yard line. And seven plays later, they'd find the end zone again. And it's first and goal. Bearcats at the 1. 8.51 to go. The Bearcats one touchdown and an extra point away from making this a running clock. I formation. They're going to hand it off to Studi. Studi puts his head down and picks up his 11th touchdown of the season. And the Bearcats now lead 34 to nothing with 8.27 to go. The point after attempt would be good, making it 35 to 0. And barring any Benson Bunny scoring for the rest of the first half, that would mean a running clock in the second half. And the Omaha Benson Bunnies would get the ball back. They'd do a three and out on their next drive. And Carney High in full run out the clock mode at this point. They take their next drive starting at the Benson 49. Seven plays later, pay dirt once again. Nathan Murray now in at quarterback. Or Colin Murray, excuse me. Two receivers to the left side. I formation. Murray under center. Hands it off. Borderoff will take it into the end zone. Touchdown. Michael Borderoff with the touchdown run. And for uh, Michael I believe that is his first touchdown run of the season. The Bearcats now lead 41 to nothing with 4.26 to go in the first half. 42 nothing after that extra point attempt. Benson Bunnies, next possession, they would start at their own 20 yard line. And I got to give the Carney High coaching staff a lot of credit here. 
you're winning 42 nothing. You're still middle of the way through the second quarter, and your defense is still playing absolutely fantastic football, as evident in plays like this. Two receivers right in a line, two to the left standing in a line. Pistol formation. Handoff with it is Block, or no, Smallwood. And Smallwood tries to take it around the left side. The football popped out, and the Bearcats have jumped on it. Is it a Bearcat turnover? It will be. Matt Studi with the fumble recovery. And the Bearcats are going to get the football back again. Matt Studi coming up with the fumble recovery there on the Benson 28-yard line. Matt Studi can do it all. He's scoring on offense. He's getting fumble recoveries on defense. The kid has been a straight stud this season for the Carney High Bearcats. Well, their possession would start at the Benson 28-yard line with just over four minutes left to go in the first half, and they would take eight plays to get all the way back into the end zone and really wrap this one up. Two receivers to the left, eye formation. Murray under center. Pitches it to Kit. Kit. Going to be hit in the backfield, but escapes the tackler and will run in for the touchdown. Corey Kitt, his second rushing touchdown of the season, and the Bearcats are now leading 48 to nothing after the five-yard touchdown run by Corey Kitt. 49 to nothing after the point after attempt would be your score headed into the locker room for the first half. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we have your second half highlights. There's not too many of them because we got a running clock through the entire second half. Plus, we'll take a look at what happened to the games on Friday. Of course, Carney High playing their game on Thursday, which meant they had a rest day on Friday. They could scoreboard watch. They could go as high as number one. They could fall as high as number five, thanks to the weighted point system here in Nebraska. So a lot of important games being played last night. We will take a look for those, and we have your unofficial playoff standings when we come back here on the KGFW Rewind on KGFW, Carney's home for the Bearcats. Carney's home for the Bearcats. <laughs> 